Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our first major conversation for today is going to be talking about uh, the plans to, of course, unban Twitter in Nigeria. But before that, how much has that cost the Nigerian economy and the Nigerian people in the 69 or 70 days since the ban uh, you know, was uh, put in place? We're speaking this morning with Nasser Agbalaya, who's uh, joining us, is a, a business editor. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Good morning, Good morning. guys. Thanks for joining us. All right. Um, the, the estimates, according to reports, it says that Nigeria has lost about 169 billion naira uh, from the ban on Twitter. Uh, the government, of course, has stated that that ban will be lifted very soon. They've also given you know, certain conditions that they hope that Twitter will be able to meet uh, you know, as uh, they get into you know, lifting the ban or the suspension on Twitter. Um, I want you to share your thoughts, first of all, on what that ban has cost Nigeria, um, Nigeria's economy and Nigerian people uh, for the last 70 days. Great to be on the show, guys. Well, first, it has cost Nigerians more than we expected. And we know that, uh, we all know that many people use Twitter as a means of reaching out to the general public. Now, this uh, affects more people in the medium and micro entrepreneurial scale. Now, they do not have big budgets to, and now have big teams to manage uh, uh, their advertising. But on Twitter, they just a mere tweet can reach up from 50 to uh, 500 individuals. So, now that space has been reduced. Now, this has caused a lot of job losses also for people in this sector. Now, even uh, multinationals in Nigeria also have been affected. Even broadcast uh, houses also were affected. Uh, though, yes, so we know that um, many people uh, have been using uh, it's out there. So for that reason, many people have been say, reluctant to use this. All right, we seem to be having a glitch uh, with the network, uh, speaking with Mr. Agbalaya um, as we wait for a reconnection. Um, once again, the conversation is about how much Nigeria has truly lost the cost of the ban on Twitter, the suspension of Twitter in Nigeria, um, and how much of a toll that has taken on Nigerian businesses, uh, mm -hmm. online businesses. Um, you know, initially we had started with, uh, you know, had conversations about what people really were able to achieve simply by having um, a Twitter account. Uh, Mr. Agbalaya, can you hear us? Yes. Okay, brilliant. Please go ahead. So, as I was saying earlier, uh, the cost for Nigeria is not just only about uh, the financial aspect. Now, many people, of course, you know, have not been earning what they were earning before. Now, many people have lost uh, a digital presence. The mileage which many Nigerian firms have, have had also was, has not been there anymore. Uh, the government on their part also uh, were affected. For instance, NBS, uh, that, that, the Bureau of Statistics, usually uh, announces a uh, new rate on Twitter. This has not been happening since the ban. So now everybody needs to uh, wait on their websites when we receive email alerts from them, which is not as fast as uh, when uh, Dr. Yemi Kale tweets, uh, this is the new inflation, this is what is happening with PMI. Instantly, Nigerians get it, media houses get it, the whole world knows. Now, that has been removed. Also, even the government themselves, they announced information on the social media handle, on their social media handles. This has been reduced. We, we are very really hoping that uh, this uh, proposed uh, cancellation of the ban will happen much sooner. <clears throat> okay, Agbalaya, um, there's a post here. Um, it basically goes on to um, talk about just how much financially Nigeria has lost in terms of, you know, the Twitter ban. I want you to help us break this down, like where these monies are being lost from. Would that be from ad revenues? Would that be the cost of, you know, goods and services that must have been purchased uh, through businesses that are on Twitter? Where exactly, you know, that fund really is coming from? Is it in terms of, you know, network providers, uh, the fact that maybe data subscriptions, the fact that they've been cut off from assessing Twitter? Can you help us um, put traces of where exactly these funds have been lost? Sincerely, you hit the nail on the head. Now, uh, those who didn't lose so much really are the telcos. 
come what way, we still need to get data uh, as we are right now. We are using data for this uh, particular interview. Now, they have not lost so much compared to uh, that person who has uh, maybe a, a salon that can reach out to his or her customer, to that person who needs to uh, sell this week or that other commodity. Now, those individuals, that's medium and micro scale, micro scale entrepreneurs are the ones who lost the most. Mm -hmm. Many people have not been able to keep their uh, staff. Uh, uh, early in July, I had an interview with a music producer. Uh, uh, the young man has a growing outfit. Now, he had to let go of some of his staff that hopefully when our business improves, he will take, back, he will take them on again. Now, that story cut across not just Lagos or Abu. Oh, it's unfortunate we're having that glitch there with Mr. Balaya, business editor at New Central TV. But really, I, I find it important for us to be able to pinpoint exactly, you know, where we're losing money and how exactly we can fix it. I think it's great news that the federal government and Twitter have been able to sit down together to discuss the terms of, you know, the resolution. But when we look at some of these um, uh, agreements, you know, Elai Mohammed mentioned that it's not a matter of, of, of what, it's a matter of when, because according to him, Twitter has agreed to fulfill these conditions, which include that they must register with the Corporate Affairs Commission, the CAC, that they must register with the Broadcast Organization of Nigeria, the NBC, that they must work with the FIRS, lots and lots of um, conditions there, um, especially with um, registering or having a Nigerian office. So I still want us to be able to look at the flip side and see, like I asked a question to one of our guests yesterday, does Nigeria benefit anything in the long run, you know, when we look at the other side of this Twitter ban? Uh, Mr. Agbalaya, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. So I want you to finish up your thoughts regarding um, the losses that Nigerians have incurred um, during the duration of the Twitter ban. And also to look at the flip side, if Nigeria as a government, uh, you know, might have gained anything. Maybe the office that is scheduled to come up 2022 and the fact that they've said that they must employ a Nigerian director, is that good for economy? The fact that they say they must now work with the FIRS and that they might be taxable. So... When you finish um, talking about the cost, um, also talk about you know, possible benefits for the Nigerian economy. Well, um, when Twitter was uh, recruiting, it, their focus, the focus of those uh, individuals from, from their DJDs, they had interest in Nigeria. So okay. opening an office in Nigeria has always been part of Twitter's plan. Mm -hmm. It is not new for Twitter. So getting the country rep for them is like a walk in the park. For the government, okay. it might be a win because you know, they have been mulling, uh, having uh, taxing more multinational, particularly those in the tech space. Yes, uh, and that has been included in the Financial Act of 2020. Yet, yeah, this is a win for them, getting more revenues. But that is not new. We knew, we knew that that would happen along the line. And even many multinationals have been bracing up that African nations will be taxing them more. But the major win is for the average Nigerian. Okay. This is the platform where people have been able to air their views, uh, do business. Even people have been able to get admissions. So having Twitter back in Nigeria would greatly uh, enhance the potentials of the average Nigerian. All right. So, well, I, uh, let's talk about the, the use of VPN now. Um, and, you know, how in any way that helped, you know, with uh, cushioning the effects of the uh, Twitter suspension in Nigeria. Um, um, did that save, you know, some of these businesses in any way or, or, you know, was that not enough? Yes and no. Yes, uh, at the initial stage, it, uh, it helps from some businesses, but only those who could afford to pay the premium with this VPN have been charging. So the main winners there are the VPN service providers, which incidentally are not usually based in Nigeria. Most of them are based in Europe particularly Western Europe, they are the winners of this particular ban, not Nigerian, because many people who went for those free uh, VPN services are at risk, because how will those people make their money? They are going to make their money by selling those people's uh, data, which, of course, is a privacy breach. So the main winners is not Nigerian because they're using VPN, unless you have uh, a particular smartphone which the latest model has 
so deep VPN. Okay. Well, I, you were talking about the pre-installed VPNs on some new model phones. Some new phones have pre-installed VPN. Okay. Particular model. I, I don't want to uh, do free adverts for yeah. any brand, but really there has there's a premium brand in Nigeria currently that has pre-installed VPN. And those who have that uh, particular phone or the or the, the models in that brand can access the, the internet despite uh, the ban. Okay. So now, was there any? Um, and what's your your what are your thoughts on the fact that there there didn't seem to be any consideration of the losses that were uh, possible before the suspension of uh, Twitter in Nigeria? The Nigerian government didn't think of how much money was likely to be lost. Uh, by this suspension, or what, what, what do you think Twitter was, you know, Nigeria was at so, so much of a risk, you know, uh, through Twitter that they, the losses, the possible losses were, you know, not considered? Nigeria was never at any serious risk, but this particular trend, it's not new. Iswatini, Gambia, it has been happening even in India and China. Many nations, to put their agenda, the government have been restricting access to the internet. It isn't new. I'm assuming that is one of the reasons why some smartphones have installed VPN. See, it's a, it's a knee-jerk reaction for the Nigerian government. They did it to protest uh, what Twitter did, uh, uh, removing uh, President Buhari's uh, quote. But that has been happening even in America, where Twitter is from. Uh, former President uh, Donald Trump, his tweet was also deleted. They, they weren't banned there because it, uh, the comment there then in that particular tweet was against Twitter's policy. So when it happened here, Nigerians were not surprised, but the government felt slighted, felt offended, and sought a redress how they thought was best. So yes, they were not considering the, uh, the aftermath, but after Nigerians protested and even went online, started continue using, using Twitter via VPNs, they rescinded that it's no longer a ban, but now a suspension. Yeah. And even uh, the lawmakers also uh, heard the cries of the masses and are waiting on it. So now <coughs> we're seeing the reality that yes, they are considering and they intend to lift the suspension, which is a win for democracy. Hmm. So, Mr. Agbalaya, how I see it is this. You, um, the federal government bans Twitter, uh, what happens is that uh, SMEs lose revenue. Nigerians go Definitely. ahead and use VPNs and they risk, uh, you know, privacy uh, breach and data theft. So all around, it seems that Nigerian, Nigerian businesses really lost, whether it was financial or, or otherwise. Definitely. Definitely. It's a sad reality that uh, this brought in a particular new business. Uh, a sort of Twitter-like social media site came into Nigeria at this period, uh, cool, from India, that uh, allows a multi-language, uh, uh, say, using more, many languages to pass your information across. But it has not caught on. Uh, people are not really into it as much as they expect, but even went so far as uh, using or um, taking President Muhammad Buhari as their brand ambassador. A bold move on their part, but it has not caught on as uh, Twitter and the other social media which Nigerians are used to. But who knows, right. maybe after the ban uh, is lifted, where people can now weigh each social media uh, handle and see, oh, wow, I can get this from here, I can get uh, this per service from there. Maybe that will catch on also, and Nigerians will have more options of, of so, where to... So, yes, I, that's exactly where I was going. First of all, with Ku, I, I downloaded Ku. I, I used it for a while, but you know, it, it didn't quite give me that satisfaction of a social media platform that I was looking for that's what I'm as, saying. A, as a as a perfect substitute for Twitter. So, um, you know, that that's I had to let that go. But looking in hindsight, with what exactly happened to the Nigerian economy and Nigeria's uh, social interaction with the ban on Twitter, um, do you think that we should be, begin to see or expect more investment, you know, into tech? And, you know, maybe the emergence of Nigerian, you know, innovators creating more social platforms that are local and, you know, homegrown. More, more investment in tech is an ongoing discussion that would not stop. Like, the reality is this. 
Nigeria, Southern Africa, not only the whole African continent is ripe, is rich with intellectuals, with people who have ideas, and not just ideas, who have the technical know-how to actually make things happen. For instance, look at the, all these uh, startups that are starting across Africa. They're not just starting, they are getting more and more funding. And a startup starts in Nigeria, not just to Ghana, to Kenya, while another one starts in South Africa, moves to Namibia, comes to, uh, comes to Nigeria. This is showing a trend, a trend that African startups are sought after. Uh, we all know what happened to Flut uh, Flutterway. We all know how well they have grown, and many other startups in Nigeria, even in Kenya, even in Egypt. So this shows that Africa has what it takes. Now, uh, for Europeans who are bringing money here, they know that uh, they can make more money by investing in this startup. These are millennials and Gen Zs who have ideas, who just need some funding. But the good thing for them is they get to repatriate their funds back to Europe or Asia or wherever those funds from. But that's a loss for us, in a way, because that would encourage a degree of capital flight. So All right. it's better if we can get more Nigerians or more Africans investing in these startups across Africa. Okay. Is it also important in this time to hear from uh, Tuta itself? with regards to the agreements that they have with the Nigerian government? Because we've heard the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, make um, you know, these claims um, of their agreements, you know, saying that Twitter has agreed on this and that and that. Um, but you know, would it be also important to know Twitter's side you know, and understand you know, what conclusions and what agreements they also have with the Nigerian government with regards to lifting the suspension? Fair, fairly said. But well, right now, Twitter is not responding but we do hope that uh, Twitter, uh, per me personally, will come out with a statement to either confirm or deny what uh, the federal the, the, the Nigerian government have been saying. But as it is, we need to just uh, take it as it is. Uh, it could be true. It could be uh, a bit not so true. But it's the only information we have as of now. It is possible that they will have an office in Nigeria. Like I mentioned earlier, during their recruitment process, a good number of those uh, roles they recruited for. Uh, it, it was a particular caveat was there, having knowledge of the politics and quality of uh, in Nigeria. So it shows that Nigeria is part of uh, the Twitter scope in Africa. They know that uh, many Nigerians tweet and are very active online. And also, I mentioned something about startups. Many startups are active on Twitter. Now, so a, a degree of initial um, proposals are sent via Twitter to venture capitalists. So it's an important tool to be active in Nigeria. Okay, so um, lastly, before I let you go, let's talk a bit about censorship because, you know, this whole began when Twitter deleted a tweet by the president. And uh, if Twitter's coming back, they have a lot of, you know, agreements. Do you think one of them might include some form of media censorship? Because I know that... Um, um, Lai Mohammed has also said that Twitter has to be careful um, because it seemed like they were sponsoring or allowing protest movements to go on on their platforms. But do you think when Twitter comes back, there will be some form of um, wall, firewall in the, sense, in the sense that you can't post certain content relating to protests, relating to um, uh, you know, things like that that seem to be anti-government? Do, do you think that sort of thing might happen? I doubt it. I, I sincerely doubt it. If it didn't happen in America. It did not happen in India. I don't see it happening here. Hmm. Twitter has made this policy that the, the, the platform is for free speech. Um, I remember a, a while ago, I can't remember which particular election it is, um, a particular Nigerian millionaire went to contest for a state election. I believe it was in Ondo State. What was the man's name? Now, when he came on Twitter, he was, he was bullied. He was critically bullied. What an unfortunate incident. But such things do happen. Now, the Twitter policy had not kicked in then, this particular one. A lot of people, a lot of um, people who incidentally were not using their real names, because most of those handles had um, like, like parodies of one person and or bots. the other. Yeah. Bullied him. E exactly. And bots. I assume that that, that, that particular attack was that may, maybe, maybe had no facts. Maybe it was a sponsored attack and discouraging from reaching out to young voters, but it works. He went back into his shell. 
So yeah, that is one reason why I would say that Twitter had this policy so that people can uh, express their views freely without being intimidated. Because many people have enough money or friends who are active online who can, unfortunately, uh, muzzle uh, any dissent or any opposing voices, which is not good for even politics or business. All right. Nasir Agbalaya, thank you so much for your time and for speaking with us uh, this morning. Wish you a great weekend ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Absolutely. So, Coming up next. Um, sports. Yes. Big, big sports news recently. Talking about uh, Lionel Messi. And um, um, why? Why did you, why did you react that way? You're not a fan? I am a fan. Your bias is so obvious, nah, man. I am a huge fan. <laughs> I will talk about Romelu Lukaku <laughs> and his move back to Chelsea. Stay with us.